Well, good morning, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to this presentation, especially you early birds on here on the West Coast. Uh, we'll be recording this webinar, and we'll be posting it on our website later for on-demand viewing. So let's get started. Sieve analysis is an ancient particle sizing technique traced back to thousands of years BC and used originally in mining and agriculture. Most of you in the audience have probably used sieves, use them now, or at least are aware of the method. This slide is just a quick review of current methodology, but the next slide may bring out some points that have been forgotten. Sieves are screens with openings of various established sizes. A single sieve and a nest of sieves are pictured on the right. Particles are placed on the top sieve in a nest with ever-decreasing opening sizes top to bottom. The nest is shaken and tapped in an automated shaker until the particles are separated by size of the openings. The mass of particles on each sieve is then weighed and the weight percent calculated to create a mass distribution by size. Sieves measure the middle dimension width of a particle. The smallest dimension passes the sieve, and the largest dimension, length, eventually orients vertically to also pass. This slide's a reminder of some of the shortcomings of sieve analyses. First is the potential for operator error. The particles remaining on each sieve must be carefully collected. Standards for sieve analysis techniques state to poke particles stuck in sieve openings into the next smallest sieve retained mass. This is usually done the other way around. Missed weighing the sieve fraction is a common error as are incorrect data entry or transcription plus miscalculation of the size distribution. And the number of size parameters reported by sieves is only one a mass percent by size fraction. Worn sieves is probably the largest source of error in sieve analysis. Working sieve nests wear, resulting in reporting finer and finer distributions as time goes on. Standard procedures require that working nests be recalibrated on a regular basis using a calibration nest reserved for only that purpose. This is seldom done in practice. The sieve analysis requires anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes to complete, including results calculation, considerably longer than computer automated size analysis. Finally, the sieve analysis is an ensemble measurement and cannot report the individual morphological parameters on each individual particle. Here's a schematic which shows the simplicity of the Parton 3D's dynamic image analysis method. The dry sample placed in the funnel above right moves on the vibratory feeder to the edge of the sensing zone. Here it falls by gravity through the sensing zone and is collected in the sample box at the bottom. A light strobe on one side of the sensing zone lights the particles as the digital camera on the other side photographs the particles as they tumble through the sensing zone. A video file of the analysis is stored and distributions and summary data for 32 morphological parameters for each particle are calculated and reported. And all this data is available as soon as the analysis ends, typically in one to two minutes. This is an open measurement photo of the analyzer. The particles are seen tumbling through the sensing zone on the left while the strobe and camera record the video file of the analysis. This video file can later be recalled and rerun under different measurement conditions, or it can be overlaid on a graph of a series of historical data. The sample analysis technology could hardly be more simple or robust. This illustrates how the 3D mode works. The camera tracks the tumbling and rotating orientations of each particle. 
and from those multiple individual images calculates maximum and minimum parameters so that all three axes are calculated. The advantages of the PARTAN 3D measurement over sieve analysis are numerous. The computerized automation eliminates the operator error. Automatic calibration gets around the error of worn, uncalibrated sieves. PARTAN analysis time is generally less than 2 minutes versus 15 to 20 for sieves, saving valuable labor expense. The PARTAN also reports up to 32 different size, shape, and intensity parameters. User selectable summary data, graphical and tabular distributions of each parameter, a scatter diagram display, and a viewable, remeasurable image file versus one size parameter from sieves. Also, every single particle in the sample is measured individually and all 32 parameters for each are available in a selectable spreadsheet report. Whereas sieves make an ensemble measurement reporting a distribution of only one mass parameter. The PARTAN 3D analyzer is also the only image analyzer with a 3D mode and a patented algorithm. It reports the size of all three major axes, length, width, and thickness. This 3D mode also provides much more accurate morphological data than any 2D image analyzer. We can remeasure any saved video file, allowing testing of different post-analysis SOP or standard operating procedure settings. This provides a very convenient method of continuous refinement of the SOP to use for the quality control or process control objective that the measurement is being made for. Starting in the upper left and then clockwise, select analysis from file from the browser window, then select the video file from the sample folder desired. In the lab window, select start analysis and during the remeasurement, the images can be displayed moving through the sensing zone or the distribution graph can be shown building. And again, the remeasurement can be made using SOPs other than that used in the original analysis. The three windows shown above are contained in the PARTAN 3D's XY display window. The XY graph upper left is where up to six different size parameter distributions can be displayed. Here we're showing only three, the length, width, and area equivalent diameter on a volume percent logarithmic distribution for a garnet sample. Any of the 32 parameters can be plotted and listed in the table to the right. Also, up to six different historical records for one parameter can be overlaid here for comparison purposes. The windows shown under the graph is where the graph can be set up. On the left is where any of the six plots can be selected for setup and display. Next, the current record or a set of historical records can be selected along with any correlations, filters, or classifications. Then the distribution type can be chosen, volume, count or number, or any shape parameter. Last, the general graph settings can be selected. In the upper right, the tabular distributions are shown, and below, up to 45 different pieces of summary data for all six parameters can be selected by the user to be displayed. This is the view particles display window where a lot of features are available to use for both verifying the measurement by any other technology and to method development to learn appropriate SOPs to apply to the sample. The entire image file is viewable, sortable on any parameter, and exportable.
to point out use of the many features, follow the callouts with the blue arrow clockwise starting with selected particle. The particle in the blue box in the frame shot, upper left, has the values of all of its parameters displayed under data in the column in the upper right. Next, the magnification window can be used to magnify particles in the frame from 50 to 500 percent. The image file window can be raised at the enlarge images window line. Scale images points to the window where different scaling of the image sizes can be chosen. The numerical value of the sort parameter can be turned on or off in the image file. And images can be sorted on any selected parameter. The scatter diagram can be selected and a query window for use in exploring the effect of various filters and classifications can be opened. And on the top left corner of the image file, there's a tab for choosing either the images, which we're showing now, or for displaying data. When data is selected, each column of the image file will be one of the different size and shape parameters. And the rows will represent each individual image in the file. This data file can be exported then as a spreadsheet. This is the scatter diagram display which can be selected from the view particles window. The X and Y graphs can display any of the 32 parameters selected from the windows at the bottom that the graphs are pointing to. Here the X graph is displaying one of the lengths and the Y graph is displaying sphericity which is a shape parameter. The blue area of the scatter diagram itself indicates the position of every particle in the sample with respect to the two parameters in the X and Y graphs. This is the fastest, easiest way to compare relative distributions of any pair of parameters. The graphs can be displayed as number or volume distributions. All the graphs and tables can be exported and an area of the scattergram or a classification as it's referred to can be isolated and its own distributions and summary data displayed. This is the set of parameters Microtrack reports for its Partan 3D Dynamic Image Analyzer product. <clears throat> Rather than go into each in any detail, I'll describe in four general terms what they measure. First, of course, is size. We give you 15 different size measurements for each particle in various diameters, lengths, widths, thicknesses, and more. <coughs> Excuse me. The last three columns are shapes of various natures and are generally expressed as ratios of size parameters. Form factors include a number of different parameters that indicate how closely the particle is to being a perfect sphere, or various aspect ratios or elongations of the particle. Surface roughness parameters are just that. Three different parameters can indicate the roughness factor of the particle surface. Other specialty parameters report the overall light intensity coming through the particle and the curvature of the particle as a gradient of light intensity. Now just to calm you down, don't be overwhelmed by the number of choices that you have here for parameters. You'll end up using very few and they will depend on the applications and specific problems that need to be solved and our support group at Microtrack is always there to assist you in this. Only one size is usually chosen along with one or two form or surface roughness parameters. The many choices exist to provide the flexibility to optimize your particle characterization protocol. This diagram on the right is taken from our operator's manual. It summarizes the steps to go through to look at the two most primary shape descriptor groups, form and surface roughness. 
in broad terms, size as one of the more different parameters, as one or more different parameters, is important and used by nearly all applications. When it comes to shape, the form group of descriptors is widely used in particular parameters which describe how circular a particle is or the aspect ratio of the particle. Secondarily, the surface roughness is an important descriptor group when it's desirable to know what contributed most to a change in circularity or a change in surface roughness or a combination of both. Either way, the more a particle diverges from circularity, the lower the flowability and compactability of the powder. We'll now go through three slides on particularly good applications for the Partan 3D. The first group listed here is all traditional sieve sizing applications where particles deviate significantly from sphericity. The three major categories are listed below, cylindrically shaped particles, spheroidal particles, and rectangular prisms. Sieves me measure the middle dimension, width, which for cylinders is the diameter. The Partan measures all three dimensions from which all the shape parameters can be calculated. The second category is spheroids, which can be looked at as systematically misshapen spheres. Just as a sphere is a rotated circle, spheroids are rotated ellipses. Prolate spheroids, football shaped, are ellipses rotated about their major axes. An oblate sphere, flying saucer shaped, is an ellipse rotated about its minor axis. The third category of common non spherical particles are rectangular prisms. Here, the three major axes have three different dimensions, which are all measured and reported and from which all the shape factors are calculated. And the volume of each particle, no matter what its overall shape, is calculated by the Partan as the product of its length, width, and thickness, which provides a much more accurate volume distribution than the equivalent spherical diameter as reported by 2D image analysis and overall more accurate size and shape data. A second category of applications for the Partan 3D are those traditional sieve sizing applications which are now finding that they would also benefit from shape analysis. The Partan was originally developed by an R&D team working within the granular fertilizer industry. They recognized a need to be able to measure not only size but also some type of spherical shape measurement because the closer sized and more spherical the granules were, the more consistent was the leach rate or dissolution rate of the active chemicals into the soil. Image analysis was a known technique for defining shapes of particles, but until the advent of the combination of modern day computers, strobe lamps, and especially high speed, high resolution digital cameras, could an automated instrument for these measurements become reality? In 1987, this research team installed the first online automated image analyzer for real-time control of the granular fertilizer process. Since then, this industry has been installing them all over the world. Next on the list is propens or frac sand application recognized the need for shape measurements as early as the 1960s when Crumbian and Sloss developed their chart for using manual optical microscopy to quantify the sphericity and surface roughness of frac sands. With the Partan technology, a subjective inaccurate manual microscopy measurement that took many hours can be done now in about two minutes. The frac sands have to be smooth and well-rounded to allow free flow of natural gas through the hydraulic fracture. 
Next, stone aggregates used in highway construction need to have aspect ratio controlled in a number of different size ranges to achieve proper packing in the roadbed. Centered iron pellets need consistent size and sphericity for optimum packing and even melting in a blast furnace. Reflective glass beads used in highway coatings are optimized for performance when they have high sphericity, high transparency, and curvature, as well as consistent size. And finally, time release capsules deliver their active drug ingredient at the proper rate when they have the current, the correct sphericity and size. This is a list of current applications being sold to now with the Partown 3T 3D mode under various measure, major industries. In the ores and minerals industries, Partan 3D is used both in the quality control lab and online for real-time process control. In fact, now some 60 units have been installed online in all types of processes since 1989. The Partan lab unit is used effectively in agriculture and food processing to measure important shape parameters as well as size. The various components used in road and building materials gain important information on sizes and particular shapes on the Partan 3D. The granular fertilizer industry was the first and is now the largest user of the online Partan 3D called the Partan 3D Pro and is very successfully used there for real-time automatic feedback control. With the addition of the curvature shape parameter, the Partan 3D provides the most accurate and widest range of glass bead shape parameters available from any particle characterization device. The large and diverse pharmaceutical industry utilizes image analysis for quality control of such products as tablets, capsules, and excipients, and for both process and quality control in such operations as tableting, fluid bed drying, granulation, coating, and milling. Here we show a few of the sample types that benefit from shape characterization. Granulized fertilizer, aggregates, and frac sands or propens. And here are more examples of iron ore pellets, time release drugs, and glass beads. This slide speaks to a feature in the Partan software which allows the user to develop the correlation of the Partan data to their historical sieve data. Many users find this convenient to use as they transition from reporting the data in the sieve analysis format to the part-time format. The graph shown is the final result of running this correlation feature in the software. Calling your attention to the dark blue line, this is a sieve size result, and the light blue curve is a partan result run on the same sample. The orange curve is the correlated partan measurement reported in sizes which would be reported as the sieve analysis. This result can now be saved as an SOP, and when that SOP is used for the partan analysis, the size result will be reported as it would have been had it been run on the sieves used to develop the correlation. So the user can choose to report size data in the form which matches the way it was reported historically. Here's another correlation as the last slide showed, but there's a much larger number of sieves that were used in the sieve analysis and there's a larger difference in the sieve and partan curves but this shows that the correlation is every bit as good. The correlated Partan data exactly overlays the original sieve data to prove the robustness of this algorithm. 
This slide shows the XY graph with the part-time sieve parameter. This is the actual sieve data and the part-time sieve parameter plotted as overlays on the XY graph. And you can see there just how well that they correlate and overlay each other. Thank you for taking the time to check out our on-demand webinar. If you are interested in comparing SIV data to the Partan 3D, please send an email to jason.noga at microtrack.com to schedule your analysis or demo. And for more information on our entire suite of particle analysis solutions, please visit microtrack.com.